All right, so I've got a few minutes while uh, I just got my hair cut. Yeah, it's still shiny, though. It's still warm. I'm in Arizona, so it's nice out. I'm hanging out in a friend's backyard, and I thought I would address some of the questions as I want to do some more of these videos. And so Viking Hill 83 had a question where he asked about the sword that a man gave his son when he came of age. And so coming of age and blades. This is kind of an interesting thing because there's a lot of coming of age stuff when we look at heathenry and the arch heathens of our past and uh, what can we apply to heathenry today. And so the, the whole blade thing is kind of interesting in its own right. Um, but let's kind of talk about this, uh, what is a, a rite of passage for a man per se. So there is some stuff in Viking law uh, and by Viking law, I simply mean Icelandic law. We'll talk the Gragas, the first one. Not as big a fan of the second one, but the original Gragas, um, we'll call that. Although there are some other books. Uh, there's some stuff in Sweden that dates back to, like, right when Sweden was becoming Christian, but wasn't Christian yet, and some of the laws that applied and how it applied as a whole. Um, so we can still get into that, but that's all blah. I don't really care. We're just going to use the sagas as a base, or not the sagas, but the gragas as a basis, um, and say that, and kind of go from there. So, generally speaking, a boy became a man at age 12. This is talked about both in Sweden, and in Iceland, and in Norway, and in Denmark, and so it's, but it's kind of a general term. When we actually look back at the historical data that we got, that, yeah, a boy became a man, generally speaking, was 12, and a girl became a woman when she was 13. But really it was based on a lot of other different stuff and so uh, just for the the sake of this video we'll talk about a boy um, a boy became a man within heathen tribal cultures and we'll use the vikings as an example within viking tribes um, when he was capable of doing successfully and proficiently all the things that men were expected to do so that means he could ride a horse that was a big one he could fight he could tend to the farm he could tend to the field he could do hard work by himself and be trusted not to screw it up that was a big thing when he carried the same masculine values to the tribe that other men did by those men's standards he was a man and he was treated as such so you have a lot of examples actually where uh, some greater men within a, a tribe were considered men before they were 12. And then many others who uh, weren't considered, uh, they weren't treated as men until they were well after 12. Um, and then of course you have some areas where the general age was more like 15. Um, I think there's a, a passage in, in a Swedish book of laws that goes back that a boy was a man when he had lived for 15 winters and then he was a man. Um, in general standing. Again, you still had to meet those tribal expectations of Thu of being a man by your tribal standards. And, and again, the question was the blade that a man gave to his son. And so we'll go back to that. Owning and carrying a blade out in the open was not only a sign of adulthood, but primarily it was a sign of freedom. You were a free man. What that happens is, and we have a lot of historical references to this, but again, we'll go back to the Gragas and, and a lot of the stuff that comes out of Iceland and then some of the stuff that comes out of Sweden that really talks about this a lot. And then even older stuff that goes way back, you know, to early Germanic tribes and, and Rome and all and, and Greece and all that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, again, we go to Iceland and Sweden and we have a lot of uh, talk about who gave a blade to the son when he became a man. And uh, we, th we hear about, you know, fathers giving their son a uh, blade. But actually, <laughs> historically, it was far more common and far more culturally accepted. The wife's brother would give the boy a blade when he became a man. Now, most of the time that was an ax uh, because that was the least expensive and it was a good starting point, and almost everybody had a hand axe back in the day. If they were had a lot of money, if they were a wealthy family, he might give them a sax or a knife, um, and it could be big, small, medium, whatever, uh, well, or a hand axe, or both even. There are, there are some cases where, you know, that becoming an adult, becoming a man came with a hand axe uh, and a sax. Um, a lot of times, the gift might be a sax, and the hand axe might be something that part of the boy becoming a man, he went out and had a hammer made and he made the handle himself and he showed that he could use it. That was actually part of his ritual. So he might already have a hand axe. Um, but that blade, actually most often, from the references we had, came from the wife's uncle, assuming that there was marriage involved and there was a wife's uncle 
uh, in the picture in the first place. Otherwise, it might come from uh, another family relative on the wife's side, um, and in some cases, even on the father's side. But it was far, far more common for a relative of the parents to give that blade um, as, as like a public acknowledgement. You're an adult. You're a man. Um, although that actually applied to women as well. Um, there are tons of references of when girls became women, family members giving them a hand axe or a knife. Uh, although that might be more of a smaller knife that's uh, meant to be used more around the house or for kitchen cooking. It's still hand axes were like incredibly common and used for all kinds of stuff well above and beyond warfare. And so it was not uncommon for a woman to be given uh, an axe when she became of age, although it probably wasn't as common as other household goods that women use more often. Uh, but you still hear about it, uh, reference uh, in the sagas, in historical documents, uh, even to some small, tiny little extent in archaeological digs. Um, so I hope that helps. As far as the name, uh, again, he asked for what was the name of... There's a tons of names culturally. I can't think of one off the top of my head. I could probably look up a bunch. I don't know that there was any like generally recognized name for that coming of age or for the knife that was given as a gift, although I could totally be wrong about that. All right, later.